Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Praise God. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. I know some of us worked and had a tough day, but it's still a blessing that you're able to go work today. Amen. So we're going to give God praise in all that we go through. When things feel good, when things feel bad, God is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Once again, just want to say welcome, everybody, out to our service this evening. We pray everybody get adjusted, relax, join in, and just praise God with us. Amen. I'll start up on to read the scripture to you. I'll read from Romans 10, verse 13 through 15. And it reads, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall we call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. May God add a blessing to the readers here and do the word because we understand that it's very important that the word go forth. That it's important that we are able to hear sound doctrine. Amen. That's why it is a blessing and it's a beautiful feat of those who carry the gospel. And just know this, that we all are ministers. Amen. However God bless you, whether it's in your walk, your talk. Let's be a light unto the world, amen. Let's no longer hide a light under a bushel, amen. Let the light of Christ be shown unto the world that they may see the goodness of God in us and they may ask, what must I do to be saved, amen. Hallelujah. Bless all the feet that carry the gospel. Let us pray. Dear gracious Father, once again, we say thank you. We thank you for being a great, gracious God, a mighty God that is not so high that you are mindful of us. We say thank you, Lord, for considering us in all the things that we do, Father Lord, for keeping us and blessing us and bringing us forth, Father Lord. Lord, we ask you to come into the service today, Father Lord, for we know that you are here, Father, for where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. And we say thank you, Lord. We ask you to let your spirit flow and touch everyone that's here, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch the pastors, Lord. We ask you to press the word that go forth, Father, Lord Jesus, that the ears can receive it. And, Lord, that you bless the feet that carry it. Father, Lord, we ask you to continue to bless this ministry. Bless pastor, the shepherd of this house, Father, Lord. Bless his wife, Lord Jesus. Bless the leaders, Father. Continue to build us up, Father, Lord, and instruct us and guide us in things that you have called us to do. Father, Lord, we ask you to continue to be with us, Lord, and to bless in this service. Continue to move, encourage, and edify. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Oh, come on. Let's give God a praise up in this place tonight. Oh, we can do better than that. Let's give God a praise tonight. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to quickly welcome everyone tonight, our New Jerusalem family, our Central Baptist family, and those are online. I want to welcome you, welcome you, welcome to day one of our three-day revival as we honor our pastor on his seventh anniversary. Amen? Amen. Amen. For those who may not be familiar with this place, the restrooms are down to the right, but we're going to be in here. We're getting ready, so sit back, strap in, and let's have a Holy Ghost good time tonight. Amen? I'm going to turn it over to the praise team. It's a blessing to be here this evening. I know it, it for me, it's been a rough day, but I was just so excited to come into the house of, of worship today and offer up praise to God because he is worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. He's worthy of all the praise. Every single breath that I have in my body, I owe to him. And I'm also super excited to celebrate our pastor, to celebrate the fact that God sent us a servant leader. Amen. So stand to your feet and join us as we worship the Lord, as we offer him a praise and remind everybody that he is excellent. He is awesome. He is worthy of all the glory. Amen. So join us as we offer up a praise to our God. Amen.
worthy of it all. Amen. 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 Yes. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor because we just love you just that much. You're deserving of it all, God.
Let's praise God for our praise team for setting the atmosphere this evening. Again, I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. This is the part of service. This is the part of service where we honor God by worshiping him in our giving. Come on now, don't get quiet on me. What kind of giver does God like? I can't hear you. Cheerful. And on a special anniversary, uh, seventh pastoral anniversary, we want to certainly honor our pastor today. Yes. And you can do so by downloading, or if you already have the Cash App, it's dollar sign, capital L, capital T, capital W, that's Willis2, dollar sign LT, Willis2. Go ahead and be a blessing to our pastor today and uh, show him some love by giving him a love offering. Amen. Has everyone had opportunity to be served with the envelope? If you haven't, please raise your hands. We have ushers who can assist you. We cannot beat God's giving. Giving is an act of worship. Our giving shows that we acknowledge God, that we are good stewards of the resources that he provides for us. Amen. And I can tell you, you sow a seed here at New Jerusalem, you're sowing on good ground. We teach and preach the unadulterated word of God. We don't do this for shows. We do it for souls. Amen. Has everyone had an opportunity to give? We also have our download. You can download our Give Giveify app here. New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. Deacons and trustees, you may come forward. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. been given an opportunity to give take your time we don't want to miss anyone giving tonight let us pray Jehovah Jireh, our provider, we're just grateful, Father God, for the gifts. We're grateful for the givers, Father God. We pray that you would bless it, Father God, for his intended purpose, Father God, to extend and build your kingdom, Father God. We ask it all in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So our speaker for tonight is a faithful and fervent man of God. And the word says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. And I'm gonna tell you, we have, you are in store for a treat. So after the next song from the choir, the next voice that you're here will be none other than Robert Bolden, the pastor, lead pastor of Central Baptist Church. Give him a round of applause and encouragement, amen.
So Central Baptist is going to come up here and bless us. Give them a round of applause here. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, can we clap our hands in the presence of the Lord? Come on, this is a celebration, right? Hallelujah, as the band get themselves together, hallelujah. Come on, do me a favor, stand up on your feet and let's just magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, come on, in your own words, begin to give him praise and adoration. Come on, offer whatever you want to say to him. Lord, you're worthy, Lord, you're holy. Lord, we are, we are awesome, God. We thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. How many know that the presence of the Lord is here? Come on, I don't know about you, but I felt it when I walked in. Hallelujah. Come on. And so we just want to join with New Jerusalem and just worship and declare that the presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord.
stand to your feet and welcome to the stage our guest preacher pastor robert bolden of central baptist church detroit i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord it's good to be here y'all I said, it's good to be here. The old saints would say, he didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Somebody would say, it may be my last time. I don't know. So don't hold back your praise, your worship, because you just never know. Uh, but God is a good, gracious, and faithful God. And he is worthy to be praised. How many of y'all happy to be here today? Come on, make some noise if you're happy to be here. Amen. Listen, while you're doing that, let's give God praise for Pastor L.T. Willis. Come on, y'all. First Lady Willis. These Willis children. Come on, give it up for them. Amen. I don't know how many years I've been coming here, probably at least three or four. And every year I come, uh, this church has gone to another level every time. Amen. And that's how you know that you got a visionary leader who is leading the church in the right direction. Amen. And I want us to just truly celebrate him. Amen. Seven years in the ministry. That's a lot of sermons. That's a lot of praying. That's a lot of hospital visits. That's a lot of tears, that's a lot of planning, that's a lot of praying, and I think it is appropriate to celebrate leaders such as this. Amen? So I am excited uh, to be here. I'm going to tell you all the truth. I'm still tired from Easter. I don't know why, but I just want to take a nap right here and get up early Sunday morning for church. <laughs> but I am just excited to be here. I am just Really, really honored to be able to be a part of this celebration. Amen. I want to thank God for our First Lady, First Lady Bowden, who is here today. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. My son is here. He's on the phone. Uh, we're going to have to work him out of that. 
real soon. Uh, and I want to thank God for our music ministry. Give it up for our music ministry here today. Thank you. Thank you for all of our leaders, all of our leaders who are here tonight. We appreciate you for coming out on this wonderful, wonderful uh, two Wednesday evening to celebrate God. Listen, y'all, I love church fellowships. Amen. And I just think we ought to do this as often as we can. And so it's just good to be here. We're going we're gonna to just have a good time in the presence of God. Y'all all right with that? I want you to turn with me to the book of Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 today as we see what God wants to say. There is a word from the Lord. I said there is a word from the Lord. And if your heart is ready, you shall receive. Here's what it says in Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 1. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is eight. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where your foot shall step, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates and all of the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong. Everybody say be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Everybody be seated in the presence of the Lord. We'll stop reading there. I want to preach and teach from the subject tonight when God gives you an assignment. That's what I want to talk about today, when God gives you an assignment. Shall we bow for a word of prayer? Dear God, we're so thankful for our lives, which we know we didn't get on our own. But it is a gracious gift that all of us receive this morning from you. And God, if we've ever taken for granted the gift of life, we repent of that. And we pause right now to just say thank you for our lives. Thank you for a mind that still works. Thank you for the activity of our limbs. Thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength, oh God. Thank you that everything we face this week, we're going to win because you always cause us to triumph. Now, Lord, we want to pause and lose all sense of time, but just have a special moment with you. And so our prayer today is that you will move in this place as only you can. Let every ounce of glory, honor, and praise be thine. In Jesus' name we pray, and we all said amen. I want to talk to you from that thought today when God gives you an assignment. When the story of the leadership of Joshua was written, the opening line of the script called for a transition. A transition that could be summed up in these words, Moses, my servant, is dead. And I want you to know, listen to this, that life comes with many transitions. As a matter of fact, I believe the hymn writer said it best when he said, time is filled with swift transitions. None on earth unmoved can stand. As more as every day that you live, every season that you live, you will continue to have to go through transitions. There will be transitions in your career. There will be transitions in your family. If you raise kids, you know your kids will go through the various transitions of life. You will go through the transitioning of loved ones, and then you'd have to learn how to live with people that you never thought you could live without. You even got to live through the transitions of people that you thought would be permanent fixtures in your life, leaving your life. But the truth is, listen to me, I want you to hear these words, that some of God's best seasons start with the transition. And listen to it this way, church, so that let me make it more clear of what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that many times God ushers in the best seasons of our lives through transitions that we did not want to go through. 
Listen to it this way. I want you to understand that as you go through transitions in life, I need you to realize that you're going to have to learn how to trust God through transitions. I wish I had time to talk about this. That there's a lot of trust in God that you have to do in your life. And one of those areas that you got to learn how to trust God is you got to trust God in the middle of a season that is ending and a new one that's beginning. Listen to me, church, because it will not always be one day you're here and the next day you're there. No, sometimes you got to trust God in the middle of a transition. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Say amen right there. But I want you to understand there's a reason why you can trust God in transition. Listen to this. It is because God is always doing more than one thing at a time. I wish I had time to talk about this. The scripture says, Moses, my servant, is dead. But then it says, now, Joshua, it is your time to arise. What I'm trying to tell you is that if you get caught up in the transition, you will miss that God is trying to put things in position. Listen to me. And that's how you trust God in transition is by not focusing so much on the transition, but pay attention to what God is trying to put in position in your life. I wish I had time to talk about that. Listen to me, church. That is literally what is happening in the story of the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua is the chronicles of the leadership of that great leader named Joshua. You know Joshua. He was the successor to one of God's greatest leaders named Moses. This book records the story of his leadership of the nation of Israel. He's got one primary job as the leader or the second leader of the nation of Israel. His job is to take them into the promised land. Here's the thing. They have been in pursuit of the promised land for 40 years. And now Moses is gone and Joshua has to take on the responsibility of making sure that they get over into the promised land. Let me just say to you like this, Moses is being called to a position of leadership. This text, we are watching him be elevated to a position and a call of leadership. And I need everybody here to understand that whether you know it or not, you got a call of leadership on your life. We are all leaders somewhere. You're either a leader in your home or you're a leader at your job, a leader in your community, a leader in your church. Listen to me, church, or if you're not a leader anyplace else, your number one leadership responsibility is to lead yourself. I wish I had time to talk about this. Let me just say this on my way through here while I'm passing through this neighborhood. Let me tell you that whatever your life is, you have led it there. If you can't say amen, just say ouch right there. I'm not trying to dismiss the circumstances of your life that you had no control over. But even when life leads you into a circumstance that you didn't have control over, you still have a responsibility to lead yourself through that transition. I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. And let me just say this to you. I don't want nobody beating up on themselves because maybe you're not in the place you want it to be. But let me give you something to shout about. If you led yourself into it, if you grab the hand of God, he'll help you lead yourself out of it. As a matter of fact, I think we should just shout right there. Let me tell you why. Because this is your season to lead yourself out of everything God didn't have for you. I wish I had five people know what I'm talking about. I, just because I got here don't mean I got to stay here. I know what I'm supposed to be doing, where I'm supposed to be, who I'm supposed to be with. I wish I had a church. And this is a season that I'm repenting to God, said I should have never been here in the first place. But I'm not going to stay here because I know that I've been called to a better place. Somebody give God praise if you know what I'm talking about right there. I can't stay there too long, but sometimes the enemy will make us believe that we are stuck where we are. But let me tell you something. If you got in it, you can get out of it. I got to leave that alone because I, if I talk about that, I'll miss the message. Listen to me, church. And so you're called to a position of leadership like Joshua is being commissioned to in our scripture today. And this is what I need you to understand about leadership. Leadership is simply receiving an assignment. That's what leadership is. It's being given the responsibility of carrying out an assignment. And that is what we are witnessing in Joshua chapter 1. We're witnessing Joshua be commissioned by God to receive and to execute an assignment that has been given to him. 
And the reason why I wanted us to talk about Joshua today is because I believe that God has given you some assignments. God has given me some assignments. God has given this pastor some assignments. God has given this church some assignments. Listen to me, church. And when God gives you an assignment, this is what I want you to understand. He will never give you an assignment that you are capable of doing on your own. Oh, I'm about to mess up somebody's theology. I said, I'm about to mess up your theology. You know, we got that lovely saying that we like to say in the church, the Lord will never put more on me than I can bear. I don't know who told you that. Oh, I, it's a good song. I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. And it flows off the tongue really well, but it ain't, ain't the truth of the word of God. Let me tell you what the truth is. He won't put more on you than you and him can bear together. But if you try to bear it without him, I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. Your back going to break. Your knees going to buckle. I wish I had a church here that knew what I was talking about. The only reason why you can bear it is because in your weakness, he will be your strength. In your lack, he will be your provision. In your confusion, he will be your peace. Do I got somebody here know what I'm talking about today? I'm trying to get you to understand that when God gives you an assignment, you will never truly feel adequate and prepared, and that is being done on purpose. I ain't got nobody talking to me up in here. If God gave you an assignment that you could handle on your own, I wish I had a church, then what would you really need God for? What would you really need faith for? What would you need to trust him for? I wish I had a church in here that knew what I was talking about. Listen to this. Joshua has been given an assignment to take on the helm of the leadership of a million plus people that have been walking around in the wilderness for 40 years. They had one pastor for 40 years and now Joshua, who's been with them the entire time of the journey, now he got to step up and say, now I'm the pastor. Can you imagine the level of difficulty that Joshua had trying to lead these people? They didn't even listen to Moses. Now Moses was your pastor for 40 years. You didn't even listen to him. And you think they're going to listen to young Joshua talking about I got a vision from the Lord. I wish I had time to talk about this. Imagine the level of difficulty that, that Joshua had trying to lead these people that came from Egypt into the wilderness and now he's got to try to get them to understand a concept of a promised land. I wish I had time to talk about this. And what I'm trying to get you to understand through this is very simply this, that when God gives you an assignment, your assignment will always be more difficult than you ever thought you could do. But this is the real reason why I came here. I came to tell you today that God will never give you an assignment that he does not give you everything you need to complete the assignment. You didn't shout. Let me say it again. I, I know this might not be deep enough for you, but if you really know what's going on, I promise you, you can praise him off of this. I said God ain't going to ever give you an assignment and he's not going to give you everything you need to fulfill the assignment that he has given to you. Oh, I wish I had a church in here. I'm going to go back to where I came from. Before I leave, let me just tell you, you got everything you need. Oh, I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about today. That's what he's trying to convince Joshua of in the first chapter of the book of Joshua. He said, listen, Joshua, I know that this is a high calling that I'm placing on your shoulders. But I need you to understand, I'm not just going to throw you out there and tell you to do this. I'm going to give you what you need in order to complete the assignment. Somebody says, what does he give to him? The first thing that he gives him is he gives him assurances. Everybody in the church shout assurances. That's what's being talked about in verses 3 through 5 when he says these words to him. He says, first of all, I'm going to give you every place where the sole of your feet shall go. In other words, he's given them, him the assurance of possession. He says, listen to me. I already gave the land to you. When your feet touch the ground, please know it's already yours. Before you ever get the information or the confirmation that is yours, I'm telling you that wherever your feet go, it belongs to you. And I'm getting ready to get out of here, but I want to tell somebody something. You need to realize that whenever God gives you an assignment, whatever is yours, it's already yours. 
before you take it it's already yours before you hold it in your hand it's already yours I ain't got nobody know what I'm talking about one day you are gonna realize that what God has for you it is for you and can't nobody take it from you I wish I had a church that knew what I was talking about anything that did not come your way it was not for you do I got somebody know what I'm talking about and if it get away from you if it's yours it's gonna come back to you Oh, I feel like preaching since I'm up in here. And that's the reason why at some point in your life, you're going to stop begging people to be around you. You're going to stop crying when you don't get the opportunity. You're going to stop saying, what's wrong with me? I wish I had a church when something don't work out for you. One day you're going to realize, I want what God has for me. And I'm not beating myself up another day because something that I wanted wasn't what God had for me. If it's yours, can't nobody take it from you. If you know what I'm talking about, shout amen right there. He says, I give you the assurance that the possessions are yours. Then he gives you the assurance of protection. I love what he says here. He says right here, he tells them in verse 4 and verse 5. He says, I'm going to give you the land, the Lebanon, the Hittite country, and the, and the Mediterranean Sea. And then he says, and no one is going to be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Listen to what I can really tell you, church. He's saying, you got my protection. You got the assurance of my protection. Before they even start forming weapons, you need to know you're protected. And this is the beauty of being on an assignment from God. When you're on an assignment from God, you get God's protection to cover you because you're on assignment. Didn't nobody shout. Let me say it to you like this. Some of you don't realize the only reason why you're still here is because God's got assignments from you. Nobody's talking to me. Let me tell you what I want you to know. You think that you made it through everything you've been through because you were that smart and you were that savvy. No, it's because God invested something in you. And God wasn't about to let his investment go to waste because you crazy. I wish I had five people knew what I was talking about. As a matter of fact, I think we should take a praise break right here. And this praise break is for every time your purpose became your shield of protection. I got to go, church. But I just want to tell somebody, because I know what kind of people I'm preaching to. I know what kind of people go to my church. And the people that go to my church act like because they at church on a Wednesday night, they always been at church on a Wednesday night. But some of y'all, if you tell the truth, you were some places you weren't supposed to be, doing some things you weren't supposed to do, and you think you made it out because you left on time. No, you made it out because God said, I got too much invested in your crazy self. I wish I had a church to let you die and risk and cost your life after the food. So I sent the angel in the party with you. I sent the angel in the club with you. When you was behind the wheel drunk, I put an angel in the car to steer when you couldn't steer for yourself. Listen to me, church, because I got too much invested in you to let you act a fool and tell your story up. I just want to give him praise today and this praise is because he protected me because he had assignments for me. Watch this. He says, I give you the assurance that the possession is yours. I give the assurance of protection and then I also give you the assurance of my presence. Oh, I got to get out of here. He says, I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. I ain't got time to talk about that. But he says, I am assuring you that I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. And please understand this. I don't have time to get into the, all the details of it. But the book of Joshua was a five-year journey of battle after battle after battle after battle. Listen to me, church. They had to go fight one enemy, then go fight another one, and then go fight another one. And let me tell you something. I'm sure that there were times in those battles where it looked like Joshua wasn't going to make it. Oh, but he just had to remind himself, God told me he would never leave me and he would never forsake me. And I know somebody needs to hear this today. Sometimes your battles will make you feel like you're by yourself. But you got to tell yourself, he promised me that he would never leave me and he would never forsake me and one thing about my God he ain't a liar I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about and so just tell yourself he told me he will never leave me nor forsake me 
I got to get out of here, church. Listen to me, church. So he gives us, first of all, he says, I'm giving you assurance for your journey. Then he also says, I'm giving you some advisements for your journey. And that's what he's talking about in verses 6 through 9. Here's what he says. This is going to blow your mind. He says, be strong and courageous because he will lead you through these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Look at verse 7. Be strong and very courageous. Then he says, be careful to obey all the laws that the servant Moses gave to you and do not turn from it for the right to the left. This is what he says. If you go through your, your assignment, here's my first advisement to you. You got to make sure you obey my word. Listen to me. When God gives you an assignment, he's giving you the playbook on how to execute the assignment. He says, you got to obey my word. And I am amazed at the number of people in church trying to live out their assignment without using the word. Ain't nobody going to say nothing to me up in here. We are more committed to what we think should happen than we are to the word. That's why we got to be careful. I hope I don't get in trouble here. But this is why we got to be careful about appointing people to leadership in church that don't have no word in them. I wish I had a church. You see, we put people in position because they're professional. But it's the professional devils up in church. Ain't nobody talking to me. We put people in position because they've been tenured. They've been here a long time. Let me tell you something. Do you know the rule book? Do you know the playbook of what we're supposed to be doing? This is the playbook right here. Do I got anybody know what I'm talking about? He says, here's the first thing I want to tell you. When you go on your assignment, my first advisement and admonishment to you is to, is to obey the word. But then he says, the second one is I need you to be strong. Here's what I think is interesting. I think it's interesting that he would tell them, command them to be strong. He says, be strong. What's that word strong? It means to be firm and to be confident. Let me just say this to you, church. You can't walk around here claiming to be living for God on assignment for God and you ain't got no confidence. I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. If you can't find confidence in yourself, take confidence in the person who put you on assignment. I wish I had somebody do what I was talking about. Let me tell you something. You better walk in some confidence and believe in who you are because you're not just representing yourself. You are representing the God of heaven. Do I got somebody know what I'm talking about up in here? But then I love this. He says, and here's your next admon admonishment. Be courageous. I love that word courageous. That word courageous just simply means to be bold. And you know what's so crazy to me? It's so crazy to me that in a church full of a, a church that is gathered in the name of a God who has commanded us to be bold, we continue to want to play it safe. I don't understand how we do not realize, watch this, that Jesus literally said, I am commanding you to be courageous. Why are you saying that? Because this is not a suggestion. This is not a recommendation. This is a not, this is not a take it or leave it. This is not an agree to disagree. No, he says, I am commanding you to be courageous. And I wish I had time to talk about this because we live in a world and we live in a church, listen to me church, that wants to play it safe. But at the end of the day, you got to realize that when you play it safe, you are going against the commandments of your commanding officer. You have been commanded to be courageous. And then he turns around and says, don't just be courageous, be very courageous. He repeats himself saying, I told you to be strong and courageous. Then he comes back in verse 7 and say, be strong and very courageous. That word very means exceedingly much might, force, abundance. I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. And I'm going to tell you, it's time for God's church to start walking in courage. I wish I had time to talk about this. Can I just tell y'all the truth while I'm up here today? I want y'all to understand that you need to tell yourself the truth. If you're scared, just say you're scared. I wish I had time to talk about this. Let me just say this to y'all, and I promise you I'm going to get out of your business. But the truth of the matter is, we talk about a lot of qualities of leadership. We talk about being professional, and we talk about, listen to me, church, being able to lead people, and we talk about character and integrity, and we talk about discipline and self-control, and all of those are qualities that all leaders must have. But let me tell you something. You need one more thing. You can't be no leader if you ain't got no courage. 
Some of y'all listen to me, church, you need to go in the back and eat your spinach. I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. Because you can't lead nothing without no courage. You're going to have to have the courage to stand up and say, this is what God is saying. This is what we're going to do in this family. This is what we're doing with this business. This is where we're going in this marriage. I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. Because do you know how many people are standing on the sidelines of their own lives because they don't have no courage? And I'm here to tell you, if you're going to go where God I want you to go you got to get you some courage and if somebody asks you why you acting like that just tell them I'm following the orders I've been given I've been commanded to be courageous and I rose up to give you the words of the commanding officer be strong and be very courageous I wish I had time to talk about this today. Listen to me, church. He then tells us, watch this. He says, I'm giving you some assurances. I'm giving you some advisements. And then he says, I'm also going to give you an action plan. Listen to what Moses does in verses 15 through 16. In verses, 15, um, verses 10 through 15, he goes to the camp and he starts to give them an action plan on what they're going to do. And here's what I, first, this is what I found out. The first thing that he did in the action plan was get the people prepared. The first action is the action of preparation. And I don't have time to talk about this, so I'm just going to pass through this on my way through here. You cannot ask God for something that you are not preparing for. I wish I had a church in here knew what I was talking about. Listen to me, church. You can't ask God for a house and you ain't preparing for it. You got to make sure that when God calls you to something, God puts something in your heart. You got to start getting prepared for what God has called you to do. Somebody say amen right there. But then he also says the next action is an action of remembrance. He says, listen to this. He says, please remember what the Lord has done. In verse 12, he says to the Reubenites and the Gadites and the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, listen to this in verse 13. Remember the commands that Moses the servant gave to you when the Lord said, I will give you rest in giving you this land. And let me tell you something. You know what's wrong with a lot of us? We have forgotten what God has already done for us. I'm trying to go church, but you need to understand the problem with most modern day Christians. We don't have a file of the goodness of God in our lives. Some of y'all, when you, if you got a call about a sickness in your body, you would act like it's the first time you've ever been sick before. If you get a bill on your tape in your mail when you get home, you will act like this the first bill ever came to your house. I wish I had a church. If something happened with your children, you will act like this the first time the devil that came for your children. Oh, but let me tell you something. When you got a good memory, ain't nobody talking to me. When you got a good memory, you say like David said, I fought a lion and I fought a bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine gonna be just like one of them. I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. I rose up to tell somebody, do you remember? Do you remember all the bills he paid last year? Do you remember all the ways he made last year? Do you remember all the sickness he's already healed your body? Do you know how many times he made the same doctor come back and say, I know we thought it was going to go this way, but something happened. I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. I said, do you remember? It's, let, let's get ready to shout up in here. Every bill you had last year, God paid it. Every enemy that came your way, God took care of it. Every problem came to your address, God solved it. Hey, I feel like preaching since I'm here. And what make you think he gonna stop being God this year? He's the same God yesterday, today and forever. If he healed yesterday, he can heal today. If he fought yesterday, he can fight today. Do you remember? That's what the old saints would say. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, hey, my soul cries hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. What's wrong with our faith is we got a memory problem. Watch this church. I want you to hear the action plan. The action plan is first of all get prepared. The second action step, watch this, is to remember what God has already done. <laughs> Some of you are sitting in church right now and you can never see yourself coming this far. 
You remember when this was an accomplishment. You remember when you was trying to put the money together for this. You remember when you was trying to get your kids through that. I wish I had a church. And look at what the Lord has done. Remember where he brought you from. Watch this church. But then the next step in the action plan is the action of movement. Oh, I wish I had time to talk about this. Let me just tell y'all the truth. We got a lot of thinners up in church. But it come time when Finna got to be over and it's time to go. Listen to what he told them. He said to them, listen to me. It's time for us to go and get our wives and our children and go east of the Jordan. Get the fighting men ready for battle. They must come across, listen to me church, until the Lord gives them rest as he has done for you. Until you have taken possession of the land that the Lord has given to you, which Moses, your servant, gave you east of the Jordan. What Moses, what Joshua is saying is I gave you the action plan. Now get up and let's go. Everybody in the church shall go. Listen to me, church. You would be surprised at how many times God says go. Listen to me, church. As I was studying for my Easter sermon, I started looking at the ministry of Jesus. And I started looking at how many of the miracles of Jesus included the word go. You do know, listen to me, church, that when Jesus came to the, when he was in the house and the man came lower through the roof that couldn't walk, when he got up, he said, take up your bed and go. You ain't listening to me. You remember when the ten lepers came and Jesus healed them. He told them to go. I wish I had somebody do what I was talking about. And show yourself to the priest. You remember when the man was blind. He said go wash in the pool of Siloam. You remember when the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment. He told her go. Your faith has made you well. You remember when Lazarus came about the grave. He said loose him. I wish I had a church and let him go. I wish I had five people knew what I was talking about. And I rose up to tell somebody how in the world do we have a go God and a state church ain't nobody listening to me up in here today you got a go God a God that said get up and go where I'm trying to take you if you don't see the miracle you gotta have the faith to go just nudge your neighbor and say go say get your stuff it's time to go you cannot We will never be God's church, being a stay church. He's a move in God. I wish I had a church. Don't you know when you read the book of Genesis, the first act of creation was movement? The scripture says the in the beginning was the heaven. God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And the spirit of God moved. Ain't nobody talking to me. On the face of the waters, creation started with movement. And what makes you think you're gonna do anything if you don't get up and start moving? Somebody shall go. I'm getting ready to get out of here, church. He says, here's what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you some assurances. I'm giving you, watch this, admonishments. I'm giving you an action plan. Here it is, church. And then he says, I'm going to give you some affirmation. Listen to me, church. He says, here's the affirmation. The first way I'm going to affirm is I'm going to give you some people that's willing to participate. Listen to me, church. When you look at verses 16, he says, then they answered him. Let me, let me look at this. Joshua been telling them what God told him. This is how it started. Watch this. God, listen to me, because y'all can believe I'm making it up if you don't read it. God tells Joshua, this is what you're supposed to do. Watch what happened. Then Joshua go tell the people, this is what God said. And then the people start talking back to Joshua. Look at what they said to him. They answered him. Whatever you have commanded us to do, we will do it. Wherever you will send us, we will go. Just like we fully obey Moses, we will obey you. Listen to me, church, and I need you to understand this. The people said, listen to me, church, we are willing to participate in what God is trying to do. And I know this is a pastor anniversary service. And so let me just get my pastor anniversary speech, and I'm going to get on up out of here. Every pastor needs some people that will talk back to him. I wish I had somebody knew what I was talking about. Every pastor needs some people in the church that after they've heard from God, they'll say, Pastor, if that's what God is saying, let's go. I wish I had somebody here that knew what I was talking about today. And I, don't, I, I know everybody in the church ain't the same, but let me tell you what I believe. I believe every pastor deserves some participating saints in the house of God. 
Listen to me, church. I'm thankful to God that, that I'm, I'm coming up to celebrate my 11th pastoral anniversary. And it don't take long for you to learn how church people are. And as a pastor, when we come into the ministry, we know it ain't going to always be easy. Most pastors have been in church their whole lives. They understand the nuances of church. They understand everybody ain't going to be on the same page. Everybody ain't going to always pray for you. Everybody ain't going to always believe in you. And let me tell you something. The one thing that makes it worth it is that you at least got a few people in that congregation. I'm trying to help somebody because many times we don't know the pain of, and suffering of a spiritual leader. Listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. We don't realize that many times the critics of the pastor are the loudest voices in his head. And this is why those who, who celebrate him have to talk as loud as they possibly can. Listen to me, church. Because, listen to me, we do this. I'm speaking for pastors myself. We turn our critics' volume up. And the only way for us to realize we don't just have critics is for the participating saints to talk back to us. I wish I had a church that knew what I was talking about. And I know this is a pastor anniversary service, so I need to make sure that this pastor can hear the voices of those who are the participating saints. Where the participating saints that have been here? I can't hear y'all. I said I can't hear y'all. Listen to me, church. God affirms assignments through participation. He also confirms assignments through confirmation of their history. They said, just like we were with Moses, we're going to be with you. I wish I had time to talk about this. Don't, don't tell nobody I told y'all this. But, but, but I remember when I was in my ministerial training, and my pastor sent me one time to go do a house visit for one of the members that he couldn't get to. I went over to the house, and there was a, a person there who, who was from another church. And, and when I came in the door, she didn't even know me. She just started talking about the pastor. I mean, I'm, she don't even know me. And this is what she told me. She said, you know what? My old pastor, he was the pastor for 40 years. And whatever he told me to do, that's what I did. But I'm not doing this for him. You know what's wrong with a lot of us when we have that mentality? We respect the person, but not the office. <laughs> Listen to me, church. I heard it said like this. You don't have to respect Robert Bolden, but you do got to respect Central Baptist Church's pastor. I wish I had a church because God is the one that sets in authority. And they looked at him and said, it ain't about the person. It's about the God-ordained seat. I wish I had a church that God has placed them in. And these people understood that and said, just like we were with Moses, we going to be with you. I wish I had somebody who knew what I was talking about. But then God gives them the affirmation of defense. Look at what he says in the final verse, and we're we going to get out of here. He says, whoever rebels against the word that God has given you, that, then they will be put to death. And he says, here's what you need to do. Be strong and be courageous. Let me tell you what God told Moses. He says, Moses, this is what you need to know. And then he says, Joshua, I'm going to tell you the same thing. Be strong and be courageous. And here's what you need to know. While you're being strong and living out your assignments, I will be the one to protect you. I will be the one who will fight for you. I will be the one who will be your deliverer. I wish I had a church that knew what I was talking about. You know what's wrong with some of us? Look this way, church. I'm talking to you. You know what's wrong with some of us? We allow our we allow ourselves to be taken off our assignment to deal with our enemies, to deal with our haters, to deal with our naysayers. Your job is to stick to your assignment and let God deal with your enemies. I wish I had a church that knew what I was talking about. Let me tell you what you got to do. If you're going to go for God, you're going to know there's always going to be somebody who don't like you. There's always going to be somebody who's going to turn their nose up against you. That's just a part of walking with God. Oh, but your job is to just stay faithful to your assignment and trust that God's got the process. Do I got anybody know what I'm talking about? I want you to give God praise in here because he's a God who will fight for you. Shout, he's fighting for me. I said, shout, he's fighting for me. He is my defense. He is the warrior. I wish I had a church that will fight for me while I work for him. And this is what I'm trying to tell somebody in this room today. You better let God fight for you. I said, you better let God fight for you. Everybody give God praise if you know he's a God who will fight for you. I'm finished with the church. Would you stand for just a second and we're on our way out the door. But I want to tell you this. I, I, I learned this lesson watching football. 
You already know, listen to me, church, that and on a football team, the most important role on the field is the quarterback. Listen to me, church. But if you understand how football is played, you understand that on in the, in the game of football, you, you either play offense or you play defense. The quarterback has the responsibility of managing and coordinating the game. Listen to me, church. But there comes a point in time when the quarterback has to go to the bench and he has to trust the defense that the defense will keep him in the game. And how crazy would it be for the quarterback to be out there on the field trying to defend against the other team? Listen to me, church. I have seen many football games and I've watched as the quarterback just sat on the bench and they had to just trust their defense. Listen to me, church. I've seen it come down to the final play of the game. Listen to me, church. The quarterback did their job. They put the points on the board. And now it's a minute and a half left. They down three, two. Listen to me. Or up three, up two, up six. Listen to me, church. And they've got to go sit there on the bench. And they got to be still and trust that their defensive line is going to win, is going to take care of the winning of the game. And some of you looking at me because you think I'm talking about football. This ain't about no football. I'm trying to teach you that there comes a point on your journey when you've done what you can do. And you got to just go sit on the bench and let your great defender, ain't nobody listening to me, you got to let your great defender fight for you. Listen to me, church, because you ain't going to get an assignment from God and you ain't going to have people that ain't going to come against what you're trying to do. But he will fight for you. And you got to believe that in your heart. You got to believe that he will be your defender. So I know somebody in this room, you may feel under the weight of the assignment of your life that it gets heavy. But you got to believe that he will be with you. Listen to me. You just got to put your trust in him. And there's been many times in my own journey of my life that I've had to tell myself these words. I will be with you. Listen, I heard God sing it to me saying, I will be with you. This is what I heard him say to me. I will be with you. If you will only trust me, you just got to trust me, trust me. That's what you got to tell yourself. You got to hear God singing to you saying, I will be with you. Listen, I will. raise those kids. He's saying, I will be with you. I will be with you. If you will only trust me. You just got to trust. feel alone, you got to tell yourself these words. I'll never leave you. Hallelujah. Come on. And when you feel like he's left you, just tell yourself he promised me that he'll never leave you. If you will only Gotta trust me. Trust me. Oh yeah. Trust me. And when it gets hard, you gotta tell yourself these words. Come on. I'll fight your battle. Oh yeah. I'll fight your battle. Oh, I'm gonna fight your battle.
Dear God, we're so thankful to be here tonight. Thank you for bringing us to this house today to remind us that you've given all of us some assignments. You've called us to task that we are nowhere near capable of doing on our own. Can't raise a family without your strength. Can't raise kids without your direction. We can't walk in ministry without your spirit, God. We can't keep our mind at peace on our own. We need you. But God, we thank you that we can walk out our assignments with the assurance of the fact that you give us everything that we need to walk out the purpose that you've given to us. As you were with Moses, you'll be with us. As you've been with everybody in history that held on to your unchanging hand, you will be with us, oh God. And we want to hold on to your hand and let, let you lead us safely through every assignment that you have given to us. Lord, I pray for this church. I pray for this pastor. I pray for every individual person in this room that as they walk out of this room and go back to the assignments that you have given to them, let them hear these words, be strong and very courageous. Lord, give them the strength and the courage to walk out the callings and the assignments that you have given to them. And God, we know that you're not gonna leave us and never forsake us, because that's what you told us. And so we trust you and we hold on to your promises, because you're a promise-making and a promise-keeping God. We give you glory, we give you praise in your son Jesus' name. And we all said together, amen. Come on, y'all, put those hands together. Give God praise today. Come on, would you give God praise for Pastor Bowden? Come on, you can do better than that, New Jay. Let's give God praise for Pastor Bolden preaching a mighty word on tonight. Amen. Trust and obey. Amen. We thank God for a timely word. I'm telling you, man, it's something about the Holy Spirit that get into, amen, the hearts of those that preach the gospel and send words of confirmation. And we thank God for that word today. Listen, I thank God for all of you coming out here. But just in case, we had a good time tonight. But just in case there is someone here who does, who does not know Jesus for the remission of sin, we want to give you this opportunity. I'm, look, I'm looking out and I see familiar faces, but just in case there's someone in the room, someone watching online, you want to know God's plan of salvation, first of all, let me tell you that God loves you. He loves you so much so that he sent Jesus to die for you. Even before you could see him, he sent his son to take care of all of us. And so even if you haven't confessed him as Lord and Savior, he loves you. But he doesn't love sin. We were enemy against God until we received salvation and became a friend of God. I just want to give you this opportunity. If you're in this room, you're not a member of Central Baptist Church, a member of New Jerusalem or Pentecost Baptist Church or any other churches here. If you're just wandering tonight and you want to give your heart to Christ, you feel the Holy Spirit tugging on you. You feel something moving within. You can't explain it. You're being convicted to give him your life. Would you just stand where you are? If you're in this room, stand where you are. Wherever you are. Amen. See, none has come yet. There is still room. Let's give God praise one more time for Pastor Bold. And we thank God for it. Amen. Thank God for everyone who served on tonight. Amen. I've been revived. New Jay, have you been revived? Amen. We have been revived on tonight. Listen, we're getting ready to go. Let us all stand. We're getting ready to go. Let us all stand. Thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. For all of your gifts. Amen. To the pastors that are here today, Pastor First Lady, bless you. I know you left your Bible study early. Thank you. Amen. For coming to celebrate with us today. Amen. Pastor, the original Pastor Bishop Willis is here tonight. Amen. He'll be with us on Sunday. Amen. Can't wait for that. Amen. Any other pastors in the room are our preachers. Amen. All deacons and trustees, we thank you. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for what has taken place on tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that has gone 
come forth. God, we ask you all now to be with us as we leave this place. Lord God, give us traveling grace and arriving mercies. Lord God, we be careful to give you the praise for it. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, may his grace and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, may it rule, may it abide, and people henceforth, now and forever.